By three quarter distance, Moffat should be breathing down Brock's neck. He's got all the stops out. Ford Fitz are keeping him well advised and he's making up huge amounts of ground with laps approaching record speed. The Holden dealer's team, Pitt, will be watching his approach very carefully. Brock's Pitt are obviously aware of the danger from Moffat, but at the moment they're more concerned with French. He's gone past Shivers and he's reeling in Brock very quickly. The track's drying quickly and the Falcon can use all its immense horsepower. Brock, however, still has the crucial advantages of better tyre and fuel consumption and he should be able to fight off the challenge. French has gone and fits for his second stop. A short-lived piece of glory, and time could be against him now because Brock will gain two minutes, almost a lap, and French will still have to make another stop. Out he goes in fifth. Now Shivers is in. The stop has dropped him from the third he gained during French's stop. Amazingly, the charger is banking on one stop, which with consistently fast driving has kept it up amongst the leaders, but this stop looks very slow. Whereas the works team have sophisticated equipment, Shivers' crew is working with rudimentary gear, and he is losing a lot of time. This has been a great race for 50-year-old Shivers, the super-fast veteran of Australian motorsport, and the slow stop must be annoying for him. But out he goes, faced with a long climb back up the placing slip. Moffat's in for his second stop. He's got to within 12 seconds of Brock, but the stop will drop him back another two minutes. So, to be with Brock at the flag, he's going to have to drive even harder. Let's watch this stop, because we understand that after his minute penalty for starting the car's motor during his first call to Fitz, that officials are going to keep a close eye on him. The mechanics will also keep a close watch on the situation, because any further delay could be fatal to Moffat's chances. Looks like it's going to be a fast stop, too. And he's done it. Moffat has switched on early. He's fired the motor up before the completion of refueling. An incredible mix-up. It's amazing that this could happen two stops in a row. And look, he's got another minute penalty. This will make his task almost impossible now. That puts him at least three minutes behind. But he's got to make up better than three seconds a lap to catch Brock, who's still turning very quick time. Brock's coming around again. His lead's very secure. He's getting the inside too, so it's now a race of tactics. Pit tactics play a big role in the Bathurst 500, but to win a car has to be a definite front runner, and Brock is looking good. Brock will have a big advantage though. The stop again should be about a minute and a half, which gives him a good half minute over French in pit time. And out he goes. Time in the pits, 1.27. No one's past him, and with the chasing Falcon still needing a stop, he's in full command with 40 laps to go. Some other drivers won't see up those 40 laps. Uh, front left-hand tyre, uh, deflate ran off the road into the, into the safety fence and uh, consequently into the bush and you were true which stopped the car fairly quickly and uh, we're out of the race. We were quite confident, you know, uh, we were doing it pretty easy and the car's brand new, no problems at all and uh, that's motor racing, you know, all those things. Brock continues to consolidate his lead. He's driving superbly while others continue to wilt under the tremendous pressure. Gagan in trouble. He's in the pits with electrical problems. His crew's just replaced the battery, but it'll mean a push start, his second of the race, and this will mean another minute penalty. So, on our calculations, that's going to drop Gagan back to around fourth or fifth, behind Shivers, with the lead being caught out between Brock and French. There's Brock, the leader, still nicely out in front, but French is closing the gap, although he's still got that one pit stop to go. And here's drama, an unscheduled stop by Moffat. Last time in, he was complaining about the Falcon's brakes, and this could be the reason for him bringing the car in so soon. Yes, it looks as though the mechanics are checking out the system. No effort to change tyres, no one's worrying about topping up the fuel tank. I'd say that this stop could develop into a lengthy one. That'll mean the end of Moffat's chances of taking the 500 from Brock. Very disappointing moment for the Ford Works driver. After his early troubles, he was consistently making up ground, and this looks as though it will put paid to his chances. There's the mechanics working on the brake lines. A very unhappy Howard Marsden. Must be a bitter moment for him. But at least he and his driver and the car are going down fighting.
Moffat again. Wonder what he's thinking. He's lost so much time, he'll be lucky to finish in the first ten. Sad end to a fine effort. Well, we've learned something else. This is one of the reasons why we're in motor racing. We found another weak link in the chain. Unfortunately, we've had to find it out in front of a lot of people and all the television viewers. But we now know that we have another problem to solve in the brake area. That's all there is to it. It's the reason why we're motor racing, is to improve the breed. Now, at this stage, though, you still have a Ford in second place. We still all have a... is not lost. No, all yeah. is not lost, but we now have to rely on the opposition braking to get this race. And that's something that uh, I never, ever bank on. Well, what's the scene at this stage? Just everybody keeping nice and cool and calm? Yes, yes. We'll be keeping it a bit cooler very shortly, but look at it too. There seems to be a bit of a black thing on the horizon there. It'll sharpen everyone up again. Have you told him to slow down? No, I haven't told him anything. He knows what to do. Right, right. Minute yes. penalty. It well, doesn't endanger him in any way. Well, no, not really. He's that far in front of freeze. Well, he's far enough. Look at this. The race is just about run, and drama in front of the pits. Murray Carter has put his falcon into the fence at Murray's, and he doesn't know that the body work is ripping into the tyre. He'll be lucky to get around the track, and he has to do that. Regulations say he can't back up. Carter's made it in. Look at that tyre. Shredded to pieces, and look at that battered body work. Mechanics are rushing in to get him out on the track again, because Carter has the capacity to finish around about 10. Driven a sure and steady race. Must be calling to be sitting in the pits like this with mechanics tearing at the car. And they're hacking at it too. There's no time for niceties now. There's some body work in the road, so the mechanics are chopping it off. It's the quickest way. There's a good look at the ruined tyre. The Holden dealers team pit is making certain that Brock realises that French is in the runner-up slot and that as long as the Purple Falcon doesn't pass him, he's got the 500. There's Carter out again with his body modifications. French is trying very hard over these closing laps. It's been a magnificent effort by the Queensland driver, and second slot will be fine reward for his efforts. Brock's pit obviously wants a little more room between their driver and French, because the official lap scoring system suggests that the Tirana is only 68 seconds ahead. By the time you take away the minute penalty, that's not much. And French is finding that all of a sudden he's not gaining, so his die is cast. He will finish in second, Chivas will get third position, with Gagan slipping to fourth because of the penalties for push start. Brock has shown that he and the Tirana have been saving something for a last minute effort. And down they come, for the second last time, Peter Brock, at the wheel of a car that on this track, this day, has recorded a classic victory. One lap to go, one lap to victory.